we are here to be real. But if we would look at ourselves clearly, the Diné, Diné will have a way of saying going to the fourth mind, which means to look at everything. But you, you rise out of it, you look at it from outside, from the top, the bottom, all the way around, from the inside, you look at it from under it, you look at it, that's a thing for every way that you can, and you see it for what it is, and then you, <laughs> you act. I've said six to 10 weeks, but again, every, every week, as we look at those numbers, it'll help us see uh, you know, how much longer we'll have to be in this really extreme uh, mode where we're, we're not out mixing around. That this isn't about science, this is about control. And in this case, control of a narrative. You're sheltering in place, you're isolating yourself, and uh, we, we want to talk about if that still makes sense. The ultimate solution to a virus that might keep coming back would be a vaccine. Well, if we, we have 39.5 million people, if we just take a basic calculation and extrapolate that out, that equates to about 4.7 million cases throughout the state of California, which means this thing is widespread. That's the good news. We've seen 1,227 deaths in the state of California with a possible uh, incidence or prevalence of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out of work? Well, Stephen, um, there are a lot of people who are hurting and all of us want this to be over as soon as possible. The good news is that by the, making the right decisions now, we can save lives. I also wanted to mention that 96% of people in California who get COVID recover. The eventual end comes when we get a vaccine that protects all of us, not just in the US and the entire world. With almost no significant sequelae and no significant uh, continuing medical problems. So the more you test, the more positives you get, the, the prevalence number goes up and the death rate stays the same. So it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And as we move through this data, what I want you to see is millions of cases, small amount of death. Millions of cases, small amount of death. And you will see that in every state. And if we and since we we're talking about following the science, we're gonna follow the statistics and follow the science. We extrapolate data, we test people, and then we extrapolate for the entire community based on the numbers. Because it's the most accurate we have versus a predictive model that have been nowhere in the ballpark of accurate. There's a lot of vaccine candidates uh, that we're backing, and I'm optimistic uh, by late next year, one of those will come out. And we need to make sure that gets out to everyone in the world. That's right. Our response to this pandemic won't be effective unless it's equitable. And before we go, we just want to say thank you to a few people, starting with the healthcare workers in the United States and around the world who are rising to meet this challenge in such incredible and heroic ways. We see it and hear about it every day. So they, how many deaths do they have? 19,410 out of 19 million people, which is a 0.1% chance of dying from COVID in the state of New York and they have a 92% recovery rate if you are indeed diagnosed with COVID-19. We also want to thank the scientists and the researchers who are working around the clock. 92% of you will recover. Everybody who's doing their part in staying home. So we're seeing millions of cases, small amount of death.